people don't believe me when I tell them I used to be lazy. They think I'm being self-deprecating. They can't square the person I am today, a successful academic, with the kid who cleaned by stuffing everything under the bed, or the high school student who rarely attended math class and consequently had to repeat Algebra 2 the following year. How did I go from, Shannon isn't living up to her full potential, a common refrain in my parent-teacher conferences, to an ambitious, inbox zero sort of person. People are also surprised to learn that I used to be shy. When I get up in front of an audience like today, I still sometimes surprise myself. Giving a TED Talk is a far cry from the little girl who rarely raised her hand in class or the teenager who hung back and observed during social situations. I can't pinpoint any major milestone or event that set these changes in motion. Instead, I think adding a new behavior here and there slowly snowballed over time. In fact, I think I gradually shaped the traits I'd need to be successful in the life I wanted rather than let my personality dictate or limit who I could become. In addition to watching my own personality change over time, I'm also a clinical psychologist with over 15 years of experience helping people reduce barriers to living the lives they want. I've seen the power of personality change firsthand, both personally and professionally, and I'm passionate about sharing this information with others. But let's back up a little bit. Who here has taken a personality test? Let me see a show of hands. All right, so if you're like me, you've consulted BuzzFeed and you know exactly which Taylor Swift song perfectly matches your vibe. Bejeweled. Or maybe you've poured over your zodiac sign to see if your personality is compatible with a new partner. And while it may be easy to dismiss BuzzFeed quizzes and horoscopes as non-scientific, did you know that most commercially available personality tests the ones used by schools and corporations to funnel us into our ideal roles are also not backed by science. They don't actually predict career success. Another problem with the most popular approaches to understanding personality is that they assume that traits are static, that you're stuck with the personality you're born with, so you might as well make the best of it. But modern personality science tells us that traits can and do change over time. So, what if, instead of using these tests to stay in your lane personality-wise, you imagined the life of your dreams and then intentionally developed the traits that would help get you there? So for instance, if you dream of owning your own clothing boutique someday, it would be helpful to be organized so you can keep better track of your inventory. And science tells us that if you're not an organized person right now, you don't have to give up on that dream because you can cultivate the characteristic that you'd need for success. So once you've identified the traits that would come in handy in the life you want, you can use the science-backed strategies that I'll share with you today to nudge your own personality in that direction. But before we can talk about personality change, we have to be on the same page about what personality actually is. According to psychologists, your personality is your characteristic way of thinking, feeling, and behaving. Do you tend to approach situations in your life pessimistically, or are you more of a glass half full kind of person? Do you get mad when people cut you off in traffic, or are you more likely to give them the benefit of the doubt, like maybe they're on their way to the hospital? Do you plan ahead, or are you more of a fly by the seat of your pants kind of person? You can think of personality as the label that summarizes your responses to questions like these. Depending on your answers, you might be labeled as optimistic, as empathetic, as reliable. Research suggests that all of these labels that we use to describe ourselves can be summarized by five overarching traits, creatively referred to as the big five. Psychologists as early as the 1930s literally pored over the dictionary and pulled out any words that described human nature. Then they grouped those words into categories with similar themes. So words like thoughtful, friendly, kind would have been grouped together. They found that thousands of words could again be represented by just five overarching traits. Our tendency to experience negative emotions or neuroticism, 
our tendency to be excitable and sociable, also known as extroversion. The degree to which we're conscientious, that is reliable and organized and achievement striving. How well we get along with other people or our agreeableness. And finally, how open we are to new ideas, experiences, and aesthetics. So what's the optimal level of each of these traits? The level most associated with health, wealth, and happiness? That's a million dollar question, right? Well, it's kind of a trick question because the ideal level of each trait really depends on each individual person's goals and values. Let's take agreeableness as our example trait. Consider the characteristics that would come in handy if you wanted to be an elementary school teacher. Surely it would be helpful to be kind and caring and definitely, thought, or definitely patient. Now let's think about the school's principal. Of course it's still important to be kind and caring, but you also have to be assertive. You have to be able to deliver difficult feedback. I like this example because it shows that the characteristics needed for success can actually evolve across one person's career trajectory, going from being the classroom teacher to moving up through the school's leadership. I'm also really pleased to say on a personal note that my own agreeableness has decreased across time and I'm not quite as much of a people pleaser as I used to be. So identifying the optimal level of each trait for you is all well and good, but what's the point if personality is static? Can we change our personality traits? Well, oops. remember that personality is our characteristic way of thinking, feeling, and behaving. And while it may seem difficult to change your personality, we change how we think about things, we change how we feel about things, we change our habits or our behaviors all the time. If you start to think, arriving on time shows other people that I respect them. And you feel pride when you show up to brunch before your friends. And you start engaging in behaviors that increase your timeliness, like setting an alarm or an appointment reminder, then you are embodying the characteristics of a reliable person. And if you maintain those changes to your thinking, feeling, and behaving over time, then voila, you are reliable. You've changed your personality. Research supports this notion. On average, as people age, they tend to experience fewer negative emotions and more positive ones. They tend to be more conscientious, they tend to put more value in positive relationships, and they tend to be less judgmental. My own clinical trial research here at UK suggests that we can speed up this process by making intentional tweaks to our thinking and behavior using strategies drawn from cognitive behavioral therapy. Our research shows that we can see meaningful change in personality traits in less than 20 weeks instead of 20 years. And so by now, you're probably thinking, well, how do I do this? It sounds too good to be true. The good news is that cognitive behavioral strategies are relatively simple and you don't need to enlist the help of a therapist if that's not your thing. The first component is examining patterns and thinking. That's the cognitive piece. You have to be aware of any thoughts you're having that might be keeping you stuck behaving in line with a particular trait. So for instance, if you tell yourself other people are only looking out for themselves, then you're likely to behave defensively around other people. The behavioral component is examining patterns and action tendencies and trying on different responses. So again, if you behave defensively around other people, they're probably gonna respond negatively to you. They're gonna maybe snap back at you, they're gonna withdraw. And that's only gonna further entrench you in the belief that other people can't be trusted. But what if instead you tried out being more open with other people? Maybe you share with a coworker that you're struggling with the task. How might that change how people respond to you? And how might that change your view of other people? Cognitive behavioral strategies are so effective for changing your personality because again, personality is your characteristic way of thinking and behaving. And so if you change your perspective and you change your habits and you maintain those changes over time, then in essence, 
you have changed your personality. And you don't have to make all of these changes overnight. In my own life, starting small ignited my journey from messy and lazy to probably off the charts in conscientiousness. So I've already mentioned that I wasn't the strongest student in high school, and that definitely carried over into early college. Not knowing what to major in, what I was doing with my life, I, by chance, enrolled in an introduction to psychology course. Despite the 8 a.m. start time, I managed to get myself up and out of bed and to every class meeting. And I was rewarded by performing really well on the first exam. So much so that the teaching assistant pulled me aside and said, Shannon, you should seriously consider majoring in psychology. That was the push I needed to continue to apply myself in that course, and it really affected how I viewed myself. I'm good at psychology. And so I continued to enroll in psychology classes, and I continued to do well. Now, I must admit that my newfound study skills were very narrowly applied to my psych classes, and I still sporadically attended my other requirements, like two semesters of foreign language, biology. Um, and so my performance was pretty haphazard. In my junior year, I was really feeling myself as a budding psychologist. And so I decided that I wanted to go to graduate school and get my PhD in clinical psych. Truly, no one was more surprised than me. We had a speaker come to my high school to talk about her journey becoming a psychologist. And I remember thinking at the time, nah, too much school. But I was becoming more conscientious. So I worked up the nerve to talk to a trusted professor about new ambition, and I was devastated when she told me I probably wouldn't get into graduate school because my overall GPA was too low. Negative emotions are also a powerful motivator. The innate purpose of guilt is to prompt behavior change so that we don't make the same mistakes over and over again. And so motivated to feel better, I started to apply myself consistently across more of my classes. By the time I finally did get into graduate school, the demands increased exponentially. Feeling overwhelmed, I did what anyone would do. I went to Target. <laughs> and I bought my very first day planner. This was the beginning of a beautiful relationship because I now get these things monogrammed and customized every year. <laughs> Writing down all my assignments, my meetings, my readings in one place led to this palpable feeling of relief from my overwhelm. Now, anyone who's ever gone to graduate school knows that rewards are few and far between. As a first-generation college student who didn't even know what grad school was five years earlier, seeing my name in print at the top of a published article was a really powerful motivator to keep going. In fact, I liked it so much, I've now done it over 100 times. Fast forward to my early years as a professor. For the first time, I was acutely aware that other people were counting on me. The faster I responded to emails and returned edits on research papers, the more prepared my students were for success in their own careers. I started to see myself through their eyes as someone who's competent and organized and productive, and I wanted to live up to those standards. Years later, after I had my daughters, I learned the hard way that if you don't plan ahead for summer camp, they fill up. One season without reliable childcare was enough to learn that it's really hard to concentrate on my Zoom meeting if my kids are playing Lion DJ dance party in the next room. That was not a mistake that I was going to make more than once. And so now I literally set an alarm eight months in advance to sign my kids up for camp. So there's two psychological principles that are important in my journey in personality change. The first is reinforcement, which means a rewarding experience that follows a new behavior, increasing the likelihood that you'll engage in that behavior again. This can be adding something pleasant, like 
getting an article accepted for publication or feeling pride after a job well done. It can also be taking away something negative, so feeling less stressed after buying a planner. The other principle that's really important for personality change is identity. How we see ourselves has a huge impact on how we behave. If I tell myself I need the adrenaline of the last minute to start studying, you better believe I'm gonna wait till the night before to cram. But if I tell myself I'm a competent go-getter that other people are counting on, I'm at least gonna try to start in advance. And cognitive strategies can help break us free from rigid thinking patterns and be enough to test out a new behavior. And if that behavior is reinforced, then we're likely to continue it. And again, if you're changing your thinking and you're changing your behavior, then you're changing your personality. So how did a shy, messy people pleaser end up on this stage today? That is the power of personality change. And when I reflect on my personal journey and my, my research, the process is relatively simple. Not easy, but simple. First, let your dreams dictate the traits you develop, not the other way around. Then, notice if you have any self-limiting beliefs, like, I can't do X activity because I'm not X characteristic enough. Challenge those views of yourself. Notice if you are getting stuck in a particular pattern of behavior. Ask yourself what somebody with the traits you want would do and try that instead, see what happens. Finally, savor any rewards you get from making these changes. They'll make you feel good and that'll keep you moving. Thank you.